G'day, I'm Dave Pello, and today I'm with Nicola Wright, and we're talking about a new book that she's written for the Connor Court Snowflake series called Right Thinking on Abortion. Nicola, thank you so much for having a chat with me. Good to be here. Tell me, so why did you want to write this book? Well, first of all, I think Anthony had been reading a few of my articles that were around the place, and I did write one uh, called The Libertarian uh, Case Against Abortion, and he liked that, and I suppose that sowed the seed in his mind that maybe I'd be able to help him out with this series. Just having a look at some of the, the chapters that you've mm. got here, um, why talk about abortion? Well, we have to have this conversation. It's a very important one. The battle lines are definitely drawn. There's two very solid, strong camps, and sometimes it's almost uh, easy to sort of give up, more or less, and think, well, the dominant kind of cultural narrative on abortion is that it's wholly beneficial to women, and that's, um, that's widely believed. So I think if you don't agree with that, we still need to keep talking about abortion mm. whenever possible, whenever we get that opportunity. So you've divided the book into major sections. Yes. Uh, and the, f the second chapter deals with where does life begin? Yes. And, and so what have you based that on? Science. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. So basically... Uh, Why is there any debate about it then if, it's, if it can be answered by science? Well, I think uh, it makes people feel better about the concept of saying that it's okay to dispose of a new human life. When we talk about animals, there's no dispute about when a new human life, a new life is formed. So if we're talking about um, cattle breeding, for instance, you know, we'll say that we've created a new uh, embryo, this is a new life, there's no dispute. Um, so I think it, it becomes a semantics argument. Then we get into the realm of what does life actually mean? And then there's all the philosophical debates about right. human life and, and what, what does they, it mean? The uh, pro-abortion choice people really do contort and, you know, twist all over the place to try and philosophically create a space yes. where life isn't simply defined yes. by science. Yes, so life then becomes about sentience or meaning, mm. um, which is just a sidestep and a dodge. And I think that if they were being honest, they would say, we know it's like, and a lot of pro-choice uh, people are honest about this. And they'll say, yes, it's, we don't have a problem. It is a life, it's a human life. It even has value, but the woman's uh, uh, power to choose what happens with her body trumps that. And that's probably their most, that's the most honest. I, I respect the uh, intellectual honesty of that. Yeah because they're not consistent with, with the excuses on, on other definitions for life. Yes. You know, the, the arguments for sentience, um, you know, ignore people who are asleep or people who are under general anaesthetic or exactly. people who are knocked unconscious on the sporting field and that's people right. in a long-term coma that's not medically induced, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're being sustained. And, and yep. it always does come down to, if they're being intellectually honest, yep. um, the fact that they believe um, a person, mm -hmm. a mother, mm -hmm. has a, some kind of possession over some kind of property that entitles her to dispose of that property. Yes. Well, that's where we get into the main libertarian argument, which is a, becomes a property rights argument. So um, the woman's uh, womb is seen as her property, and the fetus is, well, they will say the fetus is um, someone who kind of breaks into her property and needs to be evicted, and so that's a justification. Now, the immediate problem I have with that is you're never justified in evicting somebody from your property, for example, a stowaway on a ship, mm -hmm. if the consequences of that eviction are inevitably their death. their death. That's right. So I like to call it... I respect uh, the property yeah, rights argument. Sure. It's just not a, a trump card. That's right. It's like, a, it's like drugging someone, smuggling onto an aeroplane, taking them up into the air and then saying, I don't want you here anymore, even though you're responsible for them being there in the first place. Mm. Um, so this fetus doesn't just come from nowhere. Yep. Now, you just argued that um, you're responsible for somebody being there mm. um, because of the, the act of sex. What about mm. when that's not consensual? Are you still responsible for them being there? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And that's tricky. Um, and it's hard to say this because it will outrage a lot of people. But even in the case of rape, where the woman is not responsible herself mm. for the fetus being there, the baby is still 
not um, responsible for any crime. So the person who is responsible ultimately is the rapist, and they should get all the punishment thrown at them possibly. Yeah. But why add to the ills by killing another human being? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of in the book I go through. There's a few cases there of women who were raped and had abortions and how badly that affected them. Um, and that's what we don't talk about. And when we say, well, we should talk about abortion, you know, the main thing we should talk about is negative effects of it. Because it's always painted as something positive, something that doesn't have any bad effects, you know, a minor right. procedure. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot. And there's a lot of impact and there's a lot of sad story. Yeah. So they need to be acknowledged. And like young women right. need to know about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, um, I've interviewed uh, somebody before who... Um, and uh, viewers will be able to go back on my channel and see the interview with Jennifer Christie, who was a mother uh, through rape, um, mm -hmm. happily married, already had children, mm -hmm. and then violently, violently assaulted and raped and conceived in the progress, mm -hmm. in the process. Um, now, she chose to keep her baby. Yeah. Um, but she also testified before uh, governments in the United States, uh, inquiries, um, and she made me aware of something that I wasn't aware of before, and that's three out of four mothers from rape choose to keep their baby mm. when offered the choice. Yeah, the percentage is quite high. It's it's pro it's um, projected as this I impossible situation where abortion is the only yeah. solution to, uh, and the the, um, the the concept of of you know keeping that child is somehow a reminder forever of that torment, that torture, that violence that was perpetrated against the woman, mm. which, which is a horrible thought. And yet three out of four women who are mothers from rape mm. choose to keep mm. their babies. And having the abortion doesn't take the rape away. That's right. It's not going to absolve the rapist or heal the woman in any real practical way, apart from possibly adding to her grief. Well, not possibly. I think it's inevitably. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, you know, even if there's many years of denial, mm. um, I'm, I'm aware of, and no doubt you are as well, of countless examples of women who three, five, and sometimes decades later mm. uh, have to deal with a type of post-traumatic stress, right. um, yeah. which which the kid is is yeah. unexplained by anything yeah. else. Yeah. And then when they deal with this moment yeah. of trauma in their past, where they killed their unborn child. Yeah. Um, whether willingly or, or whether through coercion, um, I mean, and the coercion is another unspoken yeah. of, mm, of issue as right. well, uh, where it's like abortion's always a woman's choice. Well, no, frequently no. And I it's do a deal tool with of domestic there. violence. Yeah, there's a, a section there where we talk about a couple of case studies of, of women Brilliant. who are publicly coerced into having abortions by a high profile. Publicly? Yeah, 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 that's been recent, the, and the, the footy girlfriends. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a tragedy. And how much of that goes on mm. uh, with ordinary people who are not high profile? Well, yeah, I certainly know of, um, of again, friends or people I've met through this business where, where they've told me the story of how their boyfriend emotionally abused them mm -hmm. and bullied them into yeah. getting it, saying, I'm going to leave you unless you kill it. Yeah. Even having um, you know, conference calls with his mates saying, have you got rid of it yet? Have you got yeah, rid yeah, of it yeah, yet? Yeah. And then when she finally goes ahead with it, then, um, then you know, hearing the mates cheering in the mm. background that yeah. that she's that's, killed that's his, a, his that's child. Abusive. Yeah. Incredibly abusive. Yeah. She never wanted yeah. to do it. it. It's not, no. you, know, you know, where that choice is being taken away from women, I'd love to see the pro-abortion choice advocates come up and have some intellectual honesty mm. and, and campaign for increased counselling, yeah. in, independent counselling, yeah. increased protections yeah. in legislation. Um, against that violence against a woman. That's right. And that's one of the problems with um, legal abortion up until birth, is that sometimes women feel if they get past a certain point and it's not legal anymore, then that pressure from the coercion is taken away because it's not legal anymore. But if abortion is legal up until birth, at any point she can still be uh, pressured by these types of people um, or her family or partner um, to, to abort even at a very late stage. Queensland's currently considering that legislation yes. and it's very similar to legislation already in place in, in Victoria. And the ACT. And the ACT and I, I'm, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. The, they say uh, it's only abortion up to 22 weeks 
but after there, all the way up to 39 weeks and you know eight days, um, at any point you only need two doctors right. to sign off on it, and there is no legal consequence if you don't. Right. Okay. I didn't know that. It, it's as good as not being a requirement right. at all. Sure. Like, what's the point of a law that has no enforcement, no consequence if you if you yeah. ignore it and neglect yeah. it? Yeah. It, all that is is a license to do it next week sure. and the week after and the week after. And the abortionist can be one of those doctors. Mm. Mm. You know, one doctor referring and the abortionist agreeing. Yes, you... Mm. Uh, and the reasons are very uh, wishy-washy as well. So some of the reasons are psychological impact on the woman. Social reasons. Yeah, yeah. so basically all your psychological, psychological mm. impact. So you can just say, oh, I can't have this baby because I don't want to. And, then the, and that's enough. Yeah, oh, gender selection um, is a, another reason. Well, that's crazy. And how can you complain about that? If if the reasoning is a woman can have an abortion for whatever reason, mm. then you can't then object to gender selection. What's disturbing is they're not objecting yeah. to abortions I've for seen gender some selection. Some feminists getting a little upset because it tends well, to should. always be the female baby. They should, but it's these feminist pro-abortion mm. choice legislators: Anastasia Palaszczuk, the Premier of Queensland, Jackie Trad her deputy premier, yeah, these people claiming to be for women mm. have no problem with babies being killed because they're women, yeah. for no other reason. Yeah. You know, we wanted a boy baby, so kill this one. Mm. It's just, mm. just, look, what do you think of the argument, it's not a baby, it's a fetus? Well, that's just silly. That's just names. That's, it's a human being. Um, so I don't find that very convincing. I mean, it's a dehumanising word. But a fetus is just That's another descriptor of a human being, like a toddler is, and a baby is, and a teenager is, and a fetus, and an embryo. Mm. They're descriptions of a stage of development of the same entity. Mm. David Van Gen, Dr. David Van Gen, says fetus is Latin for little one. Right. Which basically means you're okay with killing little people. Little one. But big people's yeah. not okay. Yeah. It's a bit very inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. It, to me, it's exactly the same. Abortion treats living humans like property, which I think is indifferent mm. from the dehumanisation of African Americans as slaves yeah. or Jews as, you know, That's right. capable of experiments in, you know, 1940s medical ethics of, of Germany. It's just ridiculous. What is interesting, though, is, is technological future developments of uh, artificial wombs, mm. um, which then would mean that you know, if that could be legislated somehow, that the only legal way a woman could not be pregnant anymore is to have the embryo removed and put into um, an artificial womb, then she would be still able to say, I don't want to be pregnant at any stage and have her property rights respected. But then she doesn't actually have the right to kill the fetus. Um, but already I've seen arguments coming out um, opposing that and saying that what we actually want is the right not to procreate. So they want the right to the actual dead fetus. Not, it's, then it becomes, it's not the bodily autonomy question at all then. That becomes wow. pushed aside. Yeah. I mean, not everyone would think We've become that, so selfish, it, haven't we? Yeah. So narcissistically self-absorbed. I think so. Where we as a human race, our, ourselves individually are the highest authority. Yeah. Um, which, I, again, I think is is the moral standard of Hitler, of uh, Mao Zedong, of Stalin. It's well, like, you just have to look at where does it lead. Like, where right. will we end up if we keep going down yeah. this route? If we don't have this, this inviolable standard that every human life is precious and worth defending at every stage, mm. uh, it creates a licence well, to a lot of do horrible out, things. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there who don't value human life. Mm. They don't see us as any more valuable than monkeys or animals. So the argument doesn't wash with them. Well, let's have a look at some of the arguments that you've got in your book. Uh, abortions are okay before the fetus is viable. Explain the argument and rebut. Well, the main argument there is if the fetus can't survive outside the mother by itself, then it's okay to get rid of it. Um, so I guess in the minds of people who argue that, they, don't, they see that there's no value in that fetus because it's actually not a self fully functioning human being yet. Um, so 
the fetus depends on the mother, so she's obligated to keep it going, and they don't they don't agree with that. Is there not a um, duty of care on on a pregnant well, woman? Well, in our society, we're led to believe that we the strong protect the weak, and what could be weaker than a than a creature that can't survive mm. on its own without sustenance? It's mm. in the safest place, it's the place it's supposed to be. Um, that is the smallest, weakest, but most vulnerable human being that we have in society. Yeah. So why do we change our minds when it comes to that? Every child a wanted child. Huh. Well, that's based on judging people's lifestyles and saying that, you know, a child in a poverty-stricken family is, is somehow better off dead. And if you could ask this fetus in the womb, would they rather be alive even if they're unwanted? They mm. would they would want to be here, you can almost guarantee. They want themselves. Um, and, and how many great people have come from, from poor and tragic childhoods? It's, it's to write them off without giving them any chance at all in life. And what about people that say they're personally pro-life, but politically pro-choice? Well, I think that's probably a disgusting point of view to have. It's like saying, I don't agree with paedophilia, but... You know, let people do it if they want to. I'm right. against it, but I'm not willing to stop that. Yeah. Or murder. Or yeah. any anything that's morally wrong. Is that very similar to um, if you don't like abortion, don't have one? Yes, that's right. It's like turning, it's just not looking the other way. It's, it's walking past uh, and accepting a certain standard. Yep. And what about people that say, um, if you don't have a house full of adopted children that you're willing to house and feed and clothe for the mm. next 20 years, then how dare you have an opinion yeah. on abortion? Well, that's the same as, as accusing uh, open borders people of not having refugees in their house. You can still have a moral opinion about something without having to then go over the top in demonstrating it in unsustainable ways. And, and these people ignore work that pro-life people are actually doing for helping pregnant people. There's right. people doing great work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of a, a few different organisations that um, work extensively, not to oppose abortion as such, yeah. but to provide women the support, yeah. based on the fact that vast numbers of post-abortive women testify that if they had have felt like there was anybody to offer them some support, right. then they would have made a different decision, mm. which sort of suggests that those people who are pro-choice mm. um, really aren't offering enough choices. That's right. So women are feeling, and they're feeling like they almost should, like it's, it's a socially acceptable answer. And almost, uh, I suppose sometimes women might feel obligated that they should do it. Because how can I ask for help when I have this option to yeah. make it all go away? Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, and what's also very unfortunate and unjust is that there's lots of government funding to help you kill your baby. Right. But absolutely no government funding to help you make a different right. choice. For example, the laws in Queensland say if you want to adopt your child out instead of killing it, you don't mm. want to be a mum, you're not ready for it, you can't offer it the life you want, great. But instead of terminating that life growing inside you, you choose to carry it to term, fulfil your duty of care until you can't any, until you, you know, don't have to, and then give it over. In Queensland, I don't know about the laws in the rest of Australia, but um, in Queensland, you cannot pre-arrange an adoption. You mm. can't make that decision, you can't work towards it, you can't get support. Well, that's something that has to change. There's absolutely no... In fact, even after it's born, yeah. you have to first put it in the foster care system oh. and then go through this really arduous process mm. of potentially putting it up for adoption. Mm. Now, I know heaps of girls who came out of the foster care system and wouldn't wish that on their worst no, enemy. No. And unfortunately, they choose to instead have an abortion yeah. instead of face yeah. that really, really punishing process. Well, that's understandable. So, yeah, adoption has to be completely reformed in Australia. We've got a real uh, moral taboo about it, and I think it's in light of all the stolen generations and all the stuff where the, you know, the orphans were shipped out to Australia from the UK, and there's really bad memories for people there. But I think what has to change is accepting it as a, and making it easier for people. Like it's such an right. arduous process, which I do talk about mm. in there, to adopt. And there's yep. people who want to. There's no shortage of people who, who are willing to adopt babies. Yeah. 
Yep. So we need to make that easier. Thank you so much for uh, for having a chat. Thank you for writing the book and putting your, your thoughts into it. If you would like to understand the pro-life position, uh, if you would like to get better at explaining the pro-life position, um, I re recommend you grab a hold of this book, Right Thinking on Abortion. It's full of a, a easy to read um, overview and grasp of, of the details. It's definitely not, um, you know, doctorate level thinking. It's accessible by anybody. It's written for everybody to be able to answer from, from teenagers on, because this is such a fundamental justice issue for our society. History will judge us, just like we stand in condemnation of those people hundreds of years ago who thought black people were property that were disposable. History is going to stand in judgment of how we consider unborn people today. Uh, are they property or are they valuable uh, human lives full of dignity and inherent value like every other human living on the planet? This has been Hello Talk. If you'd like to subscribe to the newsletter so you can be informed of every update, regardless of whether I get kicked off Facebook or not, make sure you go to my website, davepello.com. But in the meantime, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud. Make sure you go along, subscribe to get new notifications. On uh, Facebook, um, you want to see first notifications. And on YouTube, you don't just want to subscribe to the channel, you also want to click that little bell icon beside it so you get notified every time I upload a new video, which isn't so often that you'll get bombarded and harassed by it all. And as always, thank you very much to the generous uh, partners of Pello Talk, who for as little as $5 a month are uh, contributing just to keep this uh, project operating and bringing you these interviews free of charge without any paywall at all. It's uh, people like you who are investing in keeping the mainstream media uh, honest and our politicians held to account. Uh, that's it for this episode of Pello Talk, and we'll see you in the next one.